In this video, we're going to solve a problem which appear in J Advance 2018. It's a problem regarding uh, calculus. So here, the differential equation, integration, anything can be used. Okay, let's go ahead and understand the problem. So here it is given that we have two function, real valued function f and g, such that f dash x is equal to e to the power fx minus gx and g dash x. And the initial condition kind of thing is provided. Now we have to find the value of f2 and g1. And obviously the value of means that we need to find out the ranges, right? That's it. So let's go ahead and solve this particular problem. As obvious, we are going to consider the given relation, right, between the function fx and gx. So here we consider that if that x is equal to e to the power of fx minus gx. Now see that, right? It is a differential equation kind of concept, right? So here we have, we can allow to do the separation of variable. So let's go ahead. So here, notice that, that e to the power, e to the power fx minus gx can easily be rewritten as e to the power fx into e to the power of minus gx. So if I multiply that e to the power minus fx in this side, right, we obviously get it as e to the power fx and e to the power minus gx g dash x. So therefore we can proceed further and state that e to the power minus fx into f dash x is equal to e to the power minus gx and g dash x. Now see that the left hand side and right hand side are all function of fx. So therefore we are allowed to integrate it, right? Because uh, actually we are doing the separation of variable concept. Now, if we integrate both sides, right, with respect to x, so therefore we get some beautiful relation. Now here, notice carefully, if we consider, right, if we consider that z is equal to, if we consider for the left hand side, right, z is equal to fx. So then z dash is equal to f dash x dx. Or in other way, dz is equal to uh, f dash x dx. So therefore, it can be possible to rewrite the integration in the form of integration of e to the power minus z and dz. Now, this integration can be easily rewritten as in the form of e to the power minus fx. And for simplicity as a conceptual learning, we can write it as d of fx, right? Similarly, the right hand side can be written as, as e to the power minus gx and d of gx. d of gx means that g dash takes dx, okay? That's it. So therefore, if we write down that, it can be easily simplified in the form as we discussed. Now, this integration can be performed. What's that? The left hand side is equivalent to e to the power minus j dz and right hand side is obviously e to the power minus j dz. So therefore, we can rewrite it as e to the power minus fx is equal to e to the power minus gx plus k. So this is a very basic integration. If we rearrange the term, right, we get the form. So my job is done. So you obviously get a relation between fx and gx. Now let's go ahead. It's given that f1 and g2 are equal to 1 itself, right? So therefore, if we apply those initial condition, so first we to apply, we can see that x is equal to 1. If we substitute x equal to 2, we get another relation. Now see that right hand side and left hand side are equal to k for the last two relation we obtained. So that's why we are allowed to equate these two relation, right? So if we equate that, we get it the following, as it is very obvious on basic cal mathematical calculation. Now notice that it is given f1 and g2 are 1. So therefore, we can substitute for the case of f1 and g2, we substitute that uh, 1 itself. So therefore, e to the power minus 1 can be cancelled from the both side and we obtain e to the power of minus f2 and e to the power minus g1 is equal to 2 to the power e to the power minus 1 and that's it. So this is the relation we obtained until now. Now from here we have to conclude the values or the bound of our required result or required option. So let's go ahead and test that which option is correct. 
uh, it is obvious, right, that e to the power minus f2 is greater than 0 and e to the power minus g1 is greater than 0. Why? Because e to the power of minus x plus x all are greater than 0, right? That is a very normal concept. Now, if we apply the logarithm of both sides, right, we first get the logarithm or we first consider e to the power minus f2 is less than 2 to the power minus 1 and obviously e to the power minus g1 is less than 2 to the power minus 1, right? Now, I said take uh, that logarithm. Now, why I said logarithm? Because see that when it is g1, uh, e to the power something and our options are given as f2, g1 and all that. So, uh, we need to apply logarithm to remove that e and get the final values. Now, observe carefully here, right? How we get and obtain these two relations? See that here, there are one positive relation, there are another positive, right? So two positive term, right, are added together, right, and obtain another value. So it's basically like x plus y is equal to 5. So if x plus y is 5 and x and y are greater than 0, so it is obvious that, right, each of the term are less than 5, right? That's obvious, right? So therefore, now we apply the logarithm. So if we apply the logarithm of the first case, right, and the second case together, from the first case, that using the power law, if that minus f2 will come out, so it will become that minus f2 log of e less than uh, log of 2 to the power e minus 1. So it will be log e minus log e. So therefore, it can be written as, as log of 2 my plus log of e minus 1. Now, this minus 1 using the power law will become in the other side, right? So, therefore, we can easily rewritten as that e to the power, e to the power e minus f2 will be greater than or equal to f1. So, let's see that. So, here we take the logarithm and apply the properties of power law. So, therefore, minus f2 is less than log 2 to the power minus 1. And in this case, that log 2 to the power minus 1 can be written as log of 2 minus log of e to the power minus 1. Now, log of 2 will be kept aside and log of e to the power minus 1 will be minus of log e, which is 1. So, therefore, minus f2 is less than log of 2 minus 1. So, therefore, f2 is greater than 1 minus log 2. Now, we just consider the next one as well that log e to the power minus g1 and that relation if we consider that right it implies similarly g1 is greater than 1 minus log e2 if we want to see the calculation that's the calculation and the same process so notice that we obtain that the bound of f2 and g1 so therefore we can say option b and option c are correct for this particular problem so therefore, notice that this particular problem, we can treat it as differential equation concept because separation of variable is there, or maybe we can treat it as the integration because we need to perform the integration. So whatever way you want to choose, just choose it and solve. Okay. Hope you understood the problem. Thank you.